Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is the third video about my animatronic frog that's built around a pickaxe chip. In the first video, I show you the SparkFun MP3 player that I use that has an SD card and you can control it with the pickaxe chip and it's actually in stereo. And it needs to be in stereo because the right channel, it has the audio for the frog, which goes to an amplifier and to a speaker, but the left channel has DTMF tones which program the frog and the DTMF tones go to the MT8870 decoder circuit that I showed in the second video. That's where the DTMF tones get decoded and changed into a parallel output which the pickaxe can then read and then the pickaxe can make things happen based on each different tone which is where this video comes in because each tone is going to have a different movement of the servos on the frog. This is how you move the servos with the pickaxe chip using one of these 16 channel servo controllers, which use the I2C protocol. And the pickaxe chip does I2C. Matter of fact, it does HI2C, which is hardware, meaning it has built in hardware and doesn't even do it in software. So I2C works really great with the pickaxe chip. So you have nice control of these servos. So let me show you how to control one of these 16 channel servo controllers with the pickaxe chip. And let me show you the secret code that I had to figure out to make it work. We'll start with the servo driver first. I use the Adafruit 16 channel 12 bit PWM servo driver with I2C interface. I guess Adafruit is how you pronounce it. I've never heard it pronounced. I've only seen it written. But as you can see, you can control up to 16 servos. But let's have a look at the pinout. You have ground, you have OE, you have SCL, SDA, VCC, and B+. Now the VCC in your ground is the power going to this. And it should be like 5 volts. The V+, is the power going to the servos, which it also has a larger terminals up here. But these are the same thing. Up here is V plus and ground. Instead of using those pins, you can use these terminals. And then you have this OE, that's output enable. Unless you need to turn the whole thing on and off, you won't need to worry about that pin because that's all it is. If you leave it just like it is and don't do anything, it allows output. If you put a positive charge to it, it's going to disable everything. And that leaves SCL and SDA. These are both I2C ports. The SCL stands for serial clock. The SDA stands for serial data. And then on the pickaxe chip, I'm using the 14M2. If you look at the pin B3, you'll see it's the HI2C SCL. And the B4 pin is the HI2C SDA. And again, the H just means it's hardware driven instead of software, but it's the same protocol. So here's how to wire it up to the pickaxe chip. So this is where I left off last time. The pickaxe chip here, and it is controlling this MP3 player by SparkFun using serial UART commands. I show how to do that in the first video, and that's playing the SD card. There's an audio file on there, and one side has frog sounds, and the other side has a bunch of DTMF tones. The frog sounds come out the speaker. The DTMF tones are being piped into this decoder, and they are sending signals back into the chip. And at this point, they are just causing some LEDs to flash as the different tones are played. So I can show you, you'll hear frog sounds, in blinky LEDs. So now I want to get rid of these LEDs. I need to get rid of this one as well. I need to switch this one to here which is pin B5. I need to ground pin B5 because I'm going to be using B3 and B4. On the 14M2, the B3 is the I2C SCL and the B4 is the I2C SDA. And of course, that's where this thing comes in. 
So I'm going to plug it in here and then ground is pretty easy. This gets ground. The OE I don't need to worry about. We'll skip these two for now. Go to the VCC and V+. Now the VCC needs to go to the 5 volts that I'm using to power everything. And that's positive to turn this little guy on. And the V+, is what's going to power the servos. And it's the same as this thing right here. And so to make sure there's no problems, I'm going to be powering the servos with this big bad boy. And this is the negative. And then we'll put this to positive. Now on the SDL and the STA, you want pull-up resistors. And they specify 4.7K, but from what I understand, you can go up to like 10K. And so the exact number is not all that critical. But they're pull up, so it has to go to positive. So I'm going to jump that one to positive like that. Like so. And now I just have to connect them. The SCL. goes to SEL and the SDA the SDA goes to the SDA I have here four brand new servos with metal gears for these the brown is ground yellow is data and the red is positive. Let's put some of these thingy boppers on them. Let's have a look at the code now. You'll have to see the other videos to understand all of this. I'm not going over this again on what all this is. That's for the other stuff. But you can see there's a play track. That's the little subroutine that plays the track. And then here is the DTMF. Right now, all it is is making these little LEDs go high and low. So get rid of all of this. So now we need to fill that in with commands to the servos. But first, we have to initialize everything. Right up here, we're going to add this code. This is the magic code right here. So first of all, you set up the master-slave relationship, which is this first one. And then here's the part that took me forever to figure out. You had to first put it to sleep, and then you have to prescale for 50 hertz, and then you have to wake it back up. And now it will work. Now you can actually communicate to it. Now you will need a word, which is two bytes, position... POS, that's word 13. And word 13 is made up of two bytes. And so we're going to need those. So we're going to make two bytes and they're going to be called the low byte and the high byte. Let's go ahead and make another variable. Make this easy to understand. It's going to be another byte and we're going to call it servo channel. So now down here in our send servo routine, you're going to get the low byte by doing this math with the position word variable. Get the high byte doing this math with the position variable. And then here's the servo channel. As far as I know, these always need to stay zero. And then you put the long byte and the high byte. And that will send the information. So if we go to here to the DTMF and what each one of these do, the different servo channels are not just 0, 1, 2, blah, blah, blah. No, the first one is this one. And then we'll say position 200. We'll say 400. Okay, so that is for the first servo. That's the different values. I don't think I use the 0. For the next servo, instead of using... 
two or anything like that. It's uh, it's that position equals same thing. We'll go three hundred. Now the next circle channel is oddly enough, it is three. Just kidding. It's that. So we'll do the same thing. But now the fourth channel. Now the fourth channel is twelve. Now here we will go sub send servo. Okay, and that will come down to here, do all this, send it out, come back up to here, pause for a second, which we don't need to do anymore. We'll just pause just for a hair. So back at the top, we don't need data. It's the Pickaxe 14 M2. We've set our frequency and we calibrated it. We've set up the master control for the servo controller. Where we put it to sleep, we scaled it, and we woke it back up. We've set some variables for everything. We've woken the pin up for the serial out. We've set the track. We've paused to make sure everything's ready to go. We've played the track. It's starting to play the DTMF tones. Tones are getting decoded. This is picking up the different tones. Different tones are setting the different positions, and then it goes to send servo, and then this sends it out and makes the servos move. Let's see this in action. Pop this chip out. And put it in my programmer. Let me program. Here is the servos. And I'm gonna disconnect the transmission to the player. So it's going to send the code to the to the player but it's not going to make it so the player is not going to play so now it's just stuck in a loop ready for dtmf tones to come in so that it would move these servos i have it plugged into my headphone jack and i can go to a tone generating website and i can click different ones and you can see different ones will make them do different things So I'll plug back in the serial. So now it'll play the file on there. You'll hear the frogs come out the speaker and you'll see two of these move for sure. One of them I think moves once maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Here we go. That's all the major components of the animatronic frog. And so the next video will be all about putting it together. Anyway, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff, hit the subscribe button. I want to thank these people. These are the patrons. These are the people bringing you all this stuff, which I couldn't do any of it without them. And I think, thank them all so very much. And honestly, I couldn't do any of this stuff. So I'm privileged that I have them and they allow me to do this. So if you'd like to help out, of course, there's links and perks and all that stuff. So anyway, go check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching.